Welcome everyone to Tuesday Night Talk. And tonight's topic is the quintessential you. In other words, the real you. And so to start off our program, what, let's uh, join us and let's do a meditation. And myself, Elizabeth Padilla and Sister Sukanya Belsere are going to lead us into a meditation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. As we all have taken this precious time for ourselves, for understanding ourselves better, becoming better in what we think we are, what we do, with our interaction with others. Whatever is our reason, consciously or subconsciously, to be together this evening, we respect that intention of ourself and hold this vision full of faith and hope for ourself that I know I am the best and perfect form that I keep intending to become. When I see someone else performing, I feel I could do that too, in some other way, because that perfect, pure being that essence of life, the essence of the qualities required to live life is always present in the core of I, the self. I take some time to embrace that part of the self. That part that holds utmost pure energy. The part of the self that knows and has the true potential of 
the true myself what i can be what i can perform i acknowledge that pure space within the essence of life that i am that often people keep looking out somewhere perhaps i do that too sometimes so taking this time and honoring the self honoring that purest essence of the self that is untouched by any layer that has been acquired over time any layer of emotions memories interpretations beliefs i visualize that purest radiance within with my focus in this pure inner space i see the radiance growing brighter and brighter om shanti Om Shanti. Thank you. That was a lovely meditation. It's interesting that tonight's topic is about the quintessential you, um, or in other words, the real you. What does it mean to be the real you? What does it feel like? and also how to feel safe and feel at home with oneself that you don't feel you're vulnerable or a, a sense of being exposed and that that's the topic tonight and i couldn't help but in the meditation it made me feel back in touch with myself you know to be me 
and then <laughs> here we are in front of all of you on this camera and being as real as we can be. <laughs> and I guess that requires an honesty. And we thought we would start with just sharing a story, a personal story. Um, and maybe you could think of some, some time in your own life, in your own experience of feeling vulnerable or, or when you felt um, that you could be yourself or you discovered that you could just be who you were and felt empowered in being yourself. So I guess I'll rephrase that question in a simple way. Can you think of a time when you felt that you could just be you? You could, you were totally felt accepted as who you are. And um, you felt empowered to be who you are. Can you think of a time when you felt that? Maybe as a child, maybe yesterday. Um, and I know for me, when I walked into the center for the first time, and um, you know, the, on Clement Street, we had a little flat in San Francisco. Uh, and that was the center, the, the Brahma Kumari's meditation center on Clement in between 18th and 17th. And I walked up those stairs and I sat with the sister and I could tell she, her mind was so clear, so simple. And I really gravitated the, to that. I wanted to make my mind calm and clear. I wanted to be me. I wanted what was real. And I would find myself in these situations where I was just playing a role, a, you know, after role, after role. And I was good at it. I could be, you know, even if it's like a work position or what have you, I guess I'm re referring to the career I used to have as, a, as an actress, I was a professional actress. And, and it's nothing wrong, it's, I can't think of a better career as, you know, um, in performing and bringing life on the stage. So no judgment there. But for me, in my young age, that volatile time, when you're trying to search for your, who you are and to define what that is, and not have others dis define it for you. Does that sound familiar? And I wanted to break away from that. I, I felt like I was suffocating. I felt I couldn't be me. And um, artists should feel that they can be who they are. And, um, and whatever it is you create from that mindset from that perspective will be um, bring happiness it'll it'll be who you are it'll it'll be electric it'll be um, also beneficial for others they'll be inspired so that's how I'm able to navigate when I feel that I'm being authentic to myself is I can be creative and it's natural um, I can't tell you what it's like to perform in front of people and you just feel that, you know, they're relating to the character you play or perform and they're maybe even in love with the character that you're performing, but that they don't even know who you are as a person. I would find sometimes after the performance, whatever company I might have been with. And they would still talk to me as if I was that character. And I was thinking, these are grownups. They're older than me. They're mature. They have big positions. And they're, t they're treating me as if I'm still that character. 
that's how attached they would get to that um, performance in that stage, that experience that they had, and they identify it with with you. Okay, fine. But it just made me want to break away from that and start this journey. And um, so the first time that I really felt like I could be myself um, was in the center. And I would, they would ask me to sing, they would ask me to do things that were creative, programs, art, whatever. And they would just felt authentic. And I said, this is, this just feels good to me. I really um, blossomed in that way. And of course, ever since then, you know, it's always an unfolding. And that's, I think, what keeps me excited that there's something, you know, challenges come. Oh, you thought you knew who you were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so life challenges you. But I like it because it invites me to go uh, deeper. Um, so that's what we want to explore today. And I'd love to hear um, an experience you've had where you felt empowered in being yourself, just being you. A few experiences come to my mind. I could pick one of them. Uh, once I was in a um, in a gathering, um, I was part of the um, committee who had organized that event. And as always, there were uh, people were walking in, sitting on the chairs, and um, the hall wasn't full yet. So I found a chair um, somewhere in the back. And I sat there because um, I was in the welcoming committee and um, you know I didn't have much to do on the stage during that time. I was sitting in the chair and um, after a while, I hear this, um, someone uh, calling out my name, um, kind of loud enough that people could hear and the a person said to me that um, uh, Sukanya, get up from there and give that chair, give that seat to someone else. You know, people are coming in. And I was very engrossed in the performance. And um, in that moment, I thought that, oh, I should have thought about this, that I should have just stood in a corner and watched the performance. Um, and so I was okay. The event was over and a few people came up to me and said, wow, this, uh, this person spoke to you so rudely. And I said, oh, really? I did not feel that way. You know, I was okay. Um, another person came and said, oh, we felt so bad. This person spoke so rudely to you. And I said, oh, okay, but it was okay. I didn't feel that way. I was, because I really didn't feel that the person was rude to me. I was feeling rather that I should have had the sense beforehand to just get up uh, from the seat and be somewhere else so that whoever comes um, sees an available seat. Anyway, then later, um, some people from our organizing committee, organizing team said, oh, that wasn't so good of this person. This person um, was so rude to you, spoke to you so loudly in the middle of the performance. We could hear it you know, so clearly. But I was, um, through all this feedback, I started to introspect that I really did not feel that the, uh, the person's rudeness, I felt that, that the person was just um, addressing the need and rather I should have had a better sense in that scenario. 
and i was completely okay despite the feedback i did not allow the feedback to influence me and have you know um uh, stronger feelings against that person and i feel that that um must have come the um the um immediate introspection the immediate um clarity i started to bring to myself um must have come from a space where i knew that you know i am a respectable being nobody can disrespect me the true me they can um you know they can give a certain remark not so good remark perhaps about my behavior on the surface but as the spiritual training has been over the years perhaps that i feel that that had strengthened me within and nothing influenced in that scene and people would still keep addressing that but i was you know i had no effect of anything so that is how i see it that when we are um one of the attributes um i would say that helps in understanding um the self in understanding the self in uh, reference to others because that happens a lot we put ourselves down or we compare ourselves putting this a uh, self in context of others or in a context of scenario in a certain situation what has helped one of the key factors that has helped is the uh, spiritual training that um i have received here um at the brahma kumaris um centers mm-hmm. i came to the center at a, uh, when i was in college as a teenager and so um that training i think has helped me or trained me to acknowledge that true self and over the years it has grown it has become that personality has become stronger and um and so the outer influences have lesser impact which is which feels very very good because if there is a stronger influence and we feel weak in that moment we are not able to perform and although we know within inside we know that oh i have all the capacity i am so well prepared um i have all the uh, presentations ready and i have done my study but in that moment of weakness the performance is not so effective and that doesn't feel good and so i think um this um the practice the daily practice i would say the daily practice just as you would um train yourself for any skill that you wish to master that you wish to become proficient at you would practice it daily frequently and this uh, the development of this inner skill of um you know understanding your true being mm-hmm. and understanding your um um seat in the midst of everyone everyone externally we may see that someone has a higher position in a certain scenario and when the scenario changes we are in a different location different scene with different people maybe you hold a higher position 
and then another scene changes and someone else is holding a higher position in that scene in that group but internally we become so clear that okay it is a position that keeps changing it is the external um uh position for carrying out the administrative matters for carrying out the governance mm-hmm. it is a role that needs to be played that needs certain years of experience certain qualities certain skills which i may not have all of them in that um in that team uh, you know for that scenario for that project whatever it could be so we become clear but at the same time we know that it is an external role and i am this inner being that inner being of peace inner being of purity and so is everyone else so at that level we are all connected we are all spiritual entities playing externally different roles so this doesn't remain a theory when we are faced in a situation the a practice that we keep doing uh, if we uh, put the theory that we learn into practice then this strength helps us in the real life situation whenever faced so what would you say um sister what does it mean to be real you what is the real you and i heard you say a few things that it was a um your true being well, that sounds nice but how and i i can understand that and i can res- resonate with that mm-hmm. but it, what does it mean to be how do i know i'm really being me what is being real or essenceful mm-hmm. yeah good question um we see these slogans you know often used as tag lines by big brands be yourself uh, be your true self um, express your self um you know things like that your beautiful self you know we keep reading this yeah, it's like a, a self that you design yeah it's it's something that you create which actually doesn't bring you home mm-hmm. it's an image of expression which isn't bad mm-hmm. it's great to create and be um expressive and mm-hmm. um be entertaining be all these different qualities but then when we come home at the end of the day what is it that i have to be comfortable with what is it that i live with what is it that makes me feel powerful mm-hmm. yeah yeah because again um with these tag lines there is attached an image and we get attached to that image that um i am not as beautiful as that image you know instead of getting to the essence so mm-hmm. um the self that i have connected to um uh, i was fortunate that um i received this uh, spiritual exposure this knowledge at a at a early age when i had started to understand life when i had started to analyze and i was facing i had just begun to face um situations reactions emotions that um would not be very helpful for the uh, for the steady growth um like you know competition like um jealousy among you know students um i was studying engineering at that time and then um favoritism and so on and so forth so we start start to get that exposure 
and at the same time i was learning this spiritual knowledge i wasn't very keen to learn anything um, religious because i didn't know that this was spiritual at that time when my parents introduced or um, expressed their wish that um, i go and learn this meditation that would help me i wasn't very keen mm -hmm. but uh, stepping into the center i felt that something is real here just as is the experience of so many i felt something is real then a part of me was ready to um understand what is being taught here what is being shared here when i um i started to take the meditation course the next day and the very first idea that was expressed was that the self is the spiritual being the life energy which is filled with qualities of peace purity happiness bliss strength power love light this is what you are the body is just a costume that is formed one fine day and that perishes one fine day and during the time that we are in this particular costume of the body we play roles as necessary whatever we are called for whatever we feel comfortable with we keep playing those roles but neither the roles are you neither this body is you you are that essence you are that spiritual which is not physical you are not a physical entity which is subject to change perish to recreate you are not that kind of energy and so these thoughts felt so powerful and i um in the meditations that further strengthen this idea this knowledge this wisdom which felt like yes this is what i am and um so this is what is the real self is the true self what is true for me then started to be true for others as well i started to see others in the same light i started to see that uh, the role that they are playing is this but they are a spiritual being of purest of pure energy strength love respect peace and that is when i started to understand uh the meaning behind these tag lines because on the surface superficially i would also get connected to the image mm -hmm. and not identifying myself with the image because you know i was different the images that were portrayed were different you know images were of beauty images were of happiness you know images where people were having great time together but i i would see that i sometimes have good time sometimes i do not have good time so is the one who is having a good time me or is the one who is not having such a good time me so that dilemma <laughs> ended i like you this know? title i'm sorry this is good yeah. so can you bend the the one that is the good time me and the not so good time me which one is me <laughs> which one is me and so do i have to uh uh be someone who constantly um you know portrays having good time right 
I want everybody to see that I'm fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. Because that is the real me. That is what people are seeing in the images. And so I have to project that image of myself. But then again, the question is, I don't feel that way all the time. And so that, that image, the inner image, the spiritual image, the image that was constant, that felt powerful. And I held on to that. That's nice. So you answered my question of, you know, what is it to be the real you? And then you also, you know, why bother? Why, why is it important to be my, I'm, you know, can't I just carry on, you know, having this image of what I want to be in the world? I can be anything I want. Um, let me be that. Um, but what I found in trying to be those things for other people, because you're doing it for others, mm -hmm. because you want something actually, right? You want acceptance, you want you know, respect, you want them to feel you are somebody, you are worth it, mm -hmm. you are skilled. You constantly keep looking at yourself through the eyes of others because you are not sure about yourself. So you need recognition from somewhere. You cannot recognize yourself. So you want others to recognize you. And so that battle begins, which wasn't there when we were as a child, but very soon, very soon it catches up. It, it's, you do get something out of it, but after a while, what hap I find that happens mm -hmm. if they're not happy and it could be just they're not happy. Mm -hmm. But because I'm trying to be this image for them, mm -hmm. I want to be the best teacher, the best student or the best spouse or housewife or best husband or best friend. Look what I do for you. Mm -hmm. And when I hear that, look what I do for you. Have you ever heard that come out of your mouth? Mm -hmm. And um, it means that I, there's something that comes with these roles. It, it's not just to please the other. Who am I trying to please? I want to feel a sense of being valued. Mm -hmm. And so then my value is tied up in these roles. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I couldn't do that anymore, at least I, and in a, uh, as a career. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, crowd pleasing, you heard this before. And you know that really, I have to be satisfied with myself. Which makes lead, you know, I, I know people that are happy with themselves. And I, I remembering someone right now, and this person was really receptive, mm -hmm. a really good listener. And they would give others a chance. They would put others first. And when you talk to this person, they would really listen to you. Mm -hmm. And it's not like they did a lot of talking to prove I'm really listening to you. You know, you could just feel that they were taking in everything that you said. And I find that when we're comfortable with ourselves, when we feel that that's enough, just to be is enough. Um, I guess, you know, what I was thinking about was what does that feel like? And just recently, I wanted to share a, a one experience where I had to do a project. And because we're doing everything on Zoom and they wanted this project done in, a, in just a week, there wasn't much time. And um, I had to put myself on the line. I said, I don't know what made me say yes to do something that I've not really done very often and some things that I've not done before, but something in me said I could do this. And it was to write a song, sing the song, record the song, video record the song, and have it done in 12 days. And I said, yes. 
but it wasn't to prove anything. This was the beauty of it. And this is the first time I experienced this. It was that I really appreciated the project that they were doing. It was so heartfelt. They were showing all the senior yogis and there were like a hundred of them, but I think they just picked like, you know, maybe a couple handfuls of them and did, you know, interviews with them or them giving a class and then also just their face and sort of coming in onto their the face when they were in a meditative state, which would be in, in the zone, but with you not somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. Which we call drishti. It was so powerful. And I felt like, yes, I wanna be a part of this. Mm -hmm. So it came from that. So somehow it happened. Mm -hmm. And I pushed the button and sent the files. And of course I had help with uh, David Jones in Seal Beach, who's an, um, just a wonderful musician and helped me put it together. And I remember that feeling like they may not like it. It may be that it doesn't work for the, what they want. Mm -hmm. That was such a vulnerable feeling. Mm -hmm. And so I just sat with that feeling, you know, Sukanya Ben, and I just said, you know, it's okay. And it actually felt good. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Whether they use it or not, I felt so close to God in doing that. Mm -hmm because it was called living the legacy of love, linking souls to the one above, living the legacy of love. And that's the, the chorus. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And I would get like teary eyed even just kind of some of the lyrics were just coming from the heart. And if they never used it, I'm relieved. <laughs> you know, it's fine. You know, it would be fine. And, um, and then, then when I got the response that they really liked it and that they want to use it, that was a good feeling. I have to say it was a good feeling, but I went, I could feel me, my, my ego identification was starting to go in that direction. And it, it feels kind of like being pulled, you know, here. And I just backed away. I just backed away. I let it go. Whatever happens, I'm done like this. But that feeling of vulnerability, it's interesting. That's what I want to zero in on, not so much on that story, mm -hmm. where you put yourself out there. But because I believed in the project and I, and I enjoyed the process, and it was like I felt that I did, was honest with who I am and honest with what I was trying to convey. And that was the fruit of the exercise. That was all that I, I needed. And it just brings me to this point that I've heard that to be vulnerable, no matter what difficulties, because sometimes when we compare ourselves, if we're, I'm not good enough, if I'm not pretty enough, if I'm not smart enough, if I'm not um, feminine enough or masculine enough or uh, educated enough, we're never enough if I think along those lines. And when I think of this person that I was telling you about, this person always felt worthy of your company, worthy of being, worthy of belonging, worthy of love and belonging. So do I always feel worthy of love and belonging? And it doesn't mean to wear your heart on your sleeve to embrace this kind of vulnerability, but when that, I'm going to call it opportunity comes up as a teacher to teach me something about myself, the real you. And it doesn't mean that I go around and being vulnerable with everyone, no. But that I'm not afraid to be me. 
Um, and so it allowed me to be creative. It allowed me to be think out of the side of the box. Whereas if I was afraid, if there was any fear, I would want to be, please them. I would keep thinking what wanting to please the other rather than let me do this from my, how I see it from my heart mm -hmm. um, like this. So then this comes down to, and then it was interesting what you had said. So what is it being true to myself, being a true presence, the soul? And then why the self is the spiritual life energy that is full of so many qualities and powers. And if I don't have access to that, then those powers and qualities won't be available for me. And so I can't help but think of, you know, some steps. And I came up with these steps as we were talking, if I may share sure. them. Um, you know, how can we develop, and please pipe in on any of these, because I'll just mention it. How do we develop being real? How, how can I be real? Um, and of course, I need to know for myself what that is, why that's important, you know, to become a powerful presence, to become um, loving, peaceful, joyful, no matter what the situation, I'm content. And so these steps I put as an acronym, accept. And as you were talking, I, you know, was able to get more depth oh, with that. So thank yeah, you. So I hope. So A, C, C, E, P, T. Okay. You might want to jot this down. Okay. So to feel, or at least this journey, at least some steps, because it takes practice. It takes time. And I loved what you had said that you know, just to accept where I'm at right now in life. I may not be there where I want to be, right? This image mm -hmm. that the world wants of me. And, you know, and that goes with the roles that I play. But to accept where I'm at. And in doing so, I have the ability to accept where the other person is at. So and then also to accept my situation. Mm -hmm. And when you were sharing, I could feel like you could create a distance of, to get a real understanding um, of what's really happening in a situation or in a relationship or in my career or with my health issues, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is that I'm working with. So acceptance. Yeah. yeah. And anything. Um, mm -hmm. I just um, felt that when we are anchored to the true truth, then the acceptance is natural and real. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we uh, we may go into the theory of acceptance that yes, I have to, I accept everyone, I accept everything, but internally there is upheaval internally. Uh, there is um, so much disturbed talk going on, which spills over when we are in the presence, in the company of others, others feel it. Um, so that anchoring to the true truth, Beautiful, yeah, that, beautiful. And that's a lovely seg segue. Mm -hmm. So an acceptance, then anchoring to that truth, which you would be consciousness, what is the consciousness? So that's your C. So A, C, consciousness, and to anchor in that, mm -hmm. you know, who am I? I'm a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. Is it unlimited consciousness where I'm a spiritual presence, I'm eternal, I'm a soul, or limited consciousness, I'm my role, mm -hmm. I'm my story, I'm my body, I'm my image that, you know, nothing wrong with playing a part, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with playing out these roles or creating a story, you know, life, 
you know, just life, not making up one, but just, you know, you can design, you can create, but living life, but not that I'm identified with it mm -hmm. so that I can't flow with life because it's going to take its own direction, isn't it? So acceptance, con consciousness. And letting that consciousness flow through the various identities we assume mm -hmm. externally. Beautiful. Yeah. That yeah. makes it easy on ourself and also very easy and uh, confident. Confident. And this is what I heard you say. And yes. that was the next C. Okay. That yes. was the next C was confidence. Uh -huh. And that means self-respect. Mm -hmm. And a beautiful word that you said was to feel at home with myself. Mm -hmm. That is so important no? to feel comfortable within your skin as you are, what you are in that moment. And that all um, again connects to the mm -hmm. anchor that we are holding on to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, accept self, others, consciousness, unlimited, confidence, self-respect, or at home with oneself. Mm -hmm. And then we come into empathy. And this was the E. And I, this naturally came up in our conversation. And I also mentioned how this person was a good li listener. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, does, do you think it starts that this empathy has to start with my story, mm -hmm. my journey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first it starts with um, really connecting, connecting, reconnecting, keeping that practice um, with the self, connecting to the true self. That is how we connect, we see others as. So mm -hmm. first we see ourselves in the true light and we see others in the truth that they truly are. Mm -hmm. And then we are able to um, understand the various experiences we had in life, how we have learned over time. And we extend that to others as well, that they are also learning over time. If they haven't learned in this moment, they will learn. And so that extends a very compassionate feeling, a very um, mm -hmm. a harmonious feeling towards them. It doesn't feel... Um, uh, like a threat in that moment or um, you know that someone put me down or you know so we don't get into that um, mm -hmm. into that behavior war or reactive war so to say. expectation expectations is a big one wrong e <laughs> so empathy <laughs> I always say expectation you know spect right your spectacles uh -huh. means your vision. And so when you, when you do that, you cross out, you know, you become blind. Mm -hmm. When you have expectation, they are never fulfilled. Mm -hmm. They're not fulfilled. And so you feel dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. But in order to have empathy, I do have to feel at home mm -hmm. with myself. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I have to feel um, that worthiness mm -hmm. um, to override any feelings of shame or, or insufficiencies or not being good enough, that would be based on a limited set of values. Um, but I feel when we're in that unlimited set of values mm -hmm. of being a loving presence that's worthy of love and belonging, mm -hmm. when I'm coming from that place, it will penetrate with what I do and um, it would probably satisfy more relationships when you have that empathy and, like you said, that compassion and receptivity. And this would bring, you know, proper perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's the P. Mm -hmm. Perception is pretty tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are constantly perceiving. No two people see the same mm -hmm 
event or situation, or even no two people see the same person in the same way. Mm -hmm. And so I, if I am trying to be a people pleaser, mm -hmm. then I will want to, to have a sense of who I am through the lens of someone else. Yes. And how could I possibly satisfy someone else if I'm constantly wanting to satisfy their vision of me, then it would not be realistic. And I think this is where the crux of the matter of relationships, mm -hmm. especially marriages, it, there's such a, a st stigma behind, uh, you know, that, you know, this sort of, I don't want to label it really, but these expectations, whatever role you want to be, oh, I will save you, um, I'll take care of you, or um, I will transform you, you know, oh, I'll be good for you, I can make you something. And so sometimes we come in as these two whole people and we end up kind of being two halves and then we can't live without the other because we've made this sort of tacit agreement. And that's the falling in love part or the honeymoon phase, even in work situation. It could be, it's not just romantic loves, mm -hmm. but you go through a honeymoon phase. And then if you survive that, then the real love begins. Mm -hmm. But in order to survive that, we have to be willing to be who I am. And I'll never forget hearing uh, an illuminary, uh, Eckhart Tolle, saying, oh, we got married, and after a few months, I wondered who it was that I married, because the real personality traits started, the one that they're comfortable with, mm -hmm. not the one that they're presenting mm -hmm. in, you know, in that honeymoon phase. And it was like, oh no, I married somebody else, mm -hmm. you know. But that could be also you have this expectation of a job or, um, you know, anything that, you, you know, you're, whether your career or in a, a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's just tricky how, if I can really get, I, well, I believe this is true. The more I have a good sense of myself, if I have a clear perspective and just that, again, those steps of accepting oneself as I am, then I'm not going to be wanting from the other. Mm -hmm. I have it already. I have everything, which leads to T, training. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or in other words, practice <laughs> get to the real work <laughs> it takes time mm -hmm. and um that could be a t also but it's you you need it takes time but it takes like they call it dharna mm -hmm. and what is the translation in hindi dharna literally tra dharna uh, dharna means um that you have superficial translation could be to imbibe Absorb uh, to inculcate to absorb, and another meaning of the word um, dharna is uh, what you are wearing. What you are wearing is also called, you know, that I am, um, uh, you know, I am wearing this um, jacket, you know, and so anyone can see it. So that is also called as dharan, you know, dharan dharna, which means that what is very obvious in my personality. In other words, um, whatever I, um, I learn becomes a part of my personality that is so obvious that it flows out in the world. So that is what is dharna, which means I do not have to speak about it, I do not have to prove it, but it is. I have become that, I have become that. So, so the training, our life's experiences, the time we have received each moment should contribute to 
um, to becoming the image that portrays the essence, the pure essence that I am. So again, it's it, there is an image. The image expresses mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. inner self. Well, we are, we're in these bodies. Yeah. So this is an image, a picture, mm -hmm. you know, a picture, a form. But um, the behavior is also an image. You know? But instead of focusing on the image, we are focusing on bringing the essence into what uh, we are doing in what we are performing. So the focus shifts. So it's just a matter of shifting the focus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It takes and, time. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's not something you can just... Uh -huh. And then everyone becomes very comfortable, very happy, very pleased with the image that is being portrayed. I'm remembering, you know, our senior uh, dadis, um, the elders, the seniors in the organization, they, when uh, we all started to become part of this um, spiritual school, uh, they were in their much older age, but they looked so beautiful. They looked so beautiful. And that radiance, that beauty just came from their, um, their image portrayed the essence. And we, we could feel, everyone could feel, even a stranger walking on the street could feel that um, they are not conscious of that external image. They are not um, invested in that external image, but they are working from their essence, which is just flowing out and benefiting mm -hmm. the world whoever wants to benefit it's just you know unlimited flow of love service strength get inspired with whatever you want to get inspired with yes. so so what are some steps that we could begin with to kind of get a sense of the real me um, okay, yes, I can accept. Mm -hmm. I understand the state of consciousness. Um, I, uh, I mean, hopefully that will create more confidence mm -hmm. when I have a, the unlimited qualities of me. Mm -hmm. And then I would feel more compassion or empathy um, and to see things as they are. But then what is... What training, what steps can I, what are some baby steps I could start with even tonight before I go to bed? Mm -hmm. uh, to see, um, to see that, um, that part of the self that is unchangeable. To, um, to mm -hmm. at least, um, hold that idea idea that there is a part in me that is forever strong forever peaceful forever pure forever confident skillful whatever uh, quality you are looking for there is that part within me right now let me start working playing with this idea because the very um, uh, desire to, to have that quality in me, you know, where did that come from? You know, we don't desire to be, you know, I want to be the most angry person in the world. <laughs> uh, I want to be the most brutal person in the world. We don't have that desire. Why? Because this anger, this, you know, any negative trait is not part of that true me. But everyone is looking for, you know, 
I would like to be the happiest person in the world. I would like to be the most peaceful. You know? Because these are the qualities that are within us, that stay within us forever. It is just a matter of accessing them. So I would say that start with this um, idea, start to have that faith, which is the truth. Experiment with it, that I have this part within me, which I experience sometimes, may not be all the times, but when I experience it, I like it. I want mm -hmm. to be that mm -hmm. way all the time, but I cannot be that way and so on. So give energy, give, um, make that as your focus. That let me start to identify myself as that, um, through that tiny space in the consciousness that I am, that tiny space that holds the strength of the quality I look for. No. And then let me start creating thoughts from that space. For example, let us take the quality of happiness that there is a part in my consciousness, in the self that I am, that is very pure and is happiness. Instead of I am happy, just say to yourself that I am that happiness. Focus your inner eye on that one one little point in the consciousness. Just imagine the consciousness. Consciousness is a point. But um, just imagine that there is that little tiny point in that point <laughs> <laughs> that is um, that is so pure, ever pure, untouched by anything, untouched mm -hmm. by my belief that, you know, you know what, I can never be happy or I can never be strong enough, you know, which is untouched by any of these thoughts. With your inner eye, focus on that part of your own self and start creating, the second step is to start creating thoughts through this focal point. Mm -hmm. Let me start creating happy thoughts. Because if I am focused on um, some other experience I have gone through, some other memory I have gone through, I will have thoughts of that level, of that emotion. Whatever I had felt at that time, I will have thoughts very naturally. So I can, I have the potential to create thoughts, keeping this aspect of myself as the focal point, that I am ever happy, I am ever pure, I am happiness. I like to use this, um, this um, language for that part, I am happiness. And so the, um, so if there is a question, how can I be happy in this situation? Okay, then I rephrase the question. Okay, happiness is asking how to be happy. Now that doesn't um, make any sense. You know, the mind says, oh, what is that? You know, I am happiness, so I create happiness. How do I create happiness with the thoughts? You know, with the thoughts, with my behavior, let me give happiness. You know, let me bring happiness. The actions I'm carrying out, let me bring out that happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, that is, so that would be the next step. Let me bring it out through the various expressions I have. And then that starts to come back to you. Naturally, whatever you put out comes back to you. And you start to see others as um, their happiness um, essence, 
how they are creating happiness in the world or for you or for the work that you are involved in then you start to see their the aspect of happiness in their personality and then you start to appreciate that and that brings in that cult keeps cultivating more and more happiness for example well i have so, uh, well just with that you know um sister it, sometimes it's hard to believe oh i am love i am peace i am joy i am you know truth i mean i i am so i'm true if mm. if i'm have an unlimited perspective of consciousness of self and one aspect that's really helpful and i remind myself is you know when like you said when you admire a quality in someone else in order for you to resonate with that quality you know you can think of someone right now that you really appreciate or has been a positive influence for you in your life i can think of many um right now um i'm thinking of someone and the quality is um courage um and for me to appreciate that means that it it touches a place in me it resonates with me and so in order for it to be in resonance mm -hmm. means that i have experienced it mm -hmm. and also i crave it because i admire it so i've experienced courage i admire courage i crave courage now that's because the soul is made of courage it's love peace joy truth bliss purity to name a few and those are the primary and then you can make all the other qualities that are available that that really i mean the soul is just that essence right the soul is just that point of consciousness that point of light but just like with the light that we can see you can dissect it into colors when you put it through a prism right mm -hmm. and you've got a rainbow of seven colors well this body is like a prism of expression mm -hmm. and so when that light of the soul comes into the body it's like i can express it in many different ways the qualities of the soul not that i can divide the soul into all these qualities it's just what the soul is and expresses and so by that's just one way to hone in if it if there's a quality that i really want to work on or develop who has that in my life and really a, you know in a, that appreciation of recognizing it also bring that appreciation to the recognizer the self mm -hmm. and that just like i can have people push my buttons the wrong way <laughs> i can also have my buttons pushed in the right way <laughs> in the sense that um i i wouldn't be upset with someone's anger unless i had a button mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they so they push my button so not to say that the soul is anger so i don't want to confuse that that's an acquired quality that armor that we um hide the quintessential you the real me behind the armor of anger or um and of course if i'm angry it comes from fear or hurt or even loss if we experience a hurt or a loss we will also express so i look at these what we call negative qualities as symptoms mm -hmm. and the positive qualities is our essential self and so i hope that's helpful that we crave those qualities that we are made of just as the body would crave minerals proteins water because that's what it's made of right mm -hmm. and the soul 
um, craves love, truth, peace, innocence, joy. And the more that I take these steps and practice and do this training and then lovely steps to an invitation to the self to, to examine those qualities and, and bring them forward, um, then the more I'll be in resonance to them and the, then they will take more strength. They will be strengthened. And so um, any other thoughts on that um, as far as steps? What about in meditation? How could I strengthen them in a meditation? To revisit these thoughts, to, to see the self in that light, um, in the silent space of meditation, because that is what helps us to see ourselves when uh, we are not into um, uh, into the consciousness of any action or influenced by anything that is going on mm -hmm. to bring ourselves into that silent space and and visualize the self mm -hmm. as being that quality mm -hmm. and um, and that consciousness that um, spiritual energy that that we truly are and also connection with the supreme energy when we um, start seeing ourselves as a spiritual entity there is a natural connection i feel with the supreme entity that is beyond the supreme consciousness the supreme light the supreme point supreme soul that is beyond and that is truly unlimited mm -hmm. and when we feel that connection in a very close connection like a parent child connection like a friendly connection a very natural connection uh, helps to helps that energy to flow mm -hmm. within starts that energy flow and um, that is why the silence of meditation is um, is required to daily to help the self come back to that resetting point. You know, mm -hmm. Everything can help. Mm -hmm. no, everything can use a reset. Mm -hmm. you know? Everything starts working very well. Many times mm -hmm. the solution is just, oh, just reset it. You know? Just start it. <laughs> Restart it. <laughs> And so uh, meditation is like a restart, uh, like a reset, resetting of the self. We reset ourselves on the seat, mm -hmm. on the spiritual seat that we are to sit on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Detach, mm -hmm. let go of all the games and everything going on here. Uh -huh. Get in touch with my sense of self mm -hmm. the observer and then to think about and contemplate that divine being that never deviates or forgets mm -hmm. those qualities always full and resonates at that level so when i become sensitive to that frequency I will, I will get um, that connection and empowered. Mm -hmm. Just as like, if I see eye to eye with you, mm -hmm. I will feel a connection, a charge, mm -hmm. and also a validation that, oh, okay, that works for you too. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. And so in the same way, the supreme being, God, Sometimes I feel that this presence can't wait to connect, mm -hmm. is waiting to connect. But the soul has to make that sincere effort. And it can be it can begin with just questions. Who are you? I know you, I have a sense of you, or maybe you have a relationship with God, how to make it deeper. 
and more present. Um, so. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Very well put. Okay. <laughs> well, I meant if there was anything else. So maybe now we have time now, if you had any questions on how to make this journey of being the quintessential, quintessential you, the real you, or maybe even any insights um, that you might have. Um, what really resonated with you in this evening's topic? Um, I really, I really enjoyed um, sharing with you very much. And I, I put, I mean, more, more things <laughs> filled my page. It's nice when you bat things back, you know, it's like playing with a, a, a you know, when you play badminton or, mm -hmm. you know, and you just bat it back and forth uh -huh. and it just creates this wonderful atmosphere. It was very wonderful. I, um, I learned the acronym. I wasn't <laughs> sure what you were doing, but you were, you came up with an acronym of the method. Well, I actually was listening to you. And uh -huh. then uh, when we, when we were working on this together beforehand and I went, Oh, we're on to something here. Mm -hmm. Cause That's it's, beautiful. well, it's nice to have, you know, like, okay, where do I begin? What mm -hmm. can I um, use as a, a guide or a reference? Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, Kalpana. Hi. Hi. Hello. Om Shanti. Hello. Um, I just love the talk this evening. And I'm a new student of Raj Yoga. I started with Vaishali Ben. Um, and in March, April of last year. Um, but the question tonight is, what resonated with me about meditation being a reset. So during the day, if I realize that I've fallen off the wagon, how can you suggest, you know, like Baba says, in one second, you should be able to reset yourself. A, a yukti or a trick to get back on track. Mm. So can you then, yeah. Very beautiful question, very practical question that everyone faces. Um, when any situation uh, takes us off track, uh, that uh, to see that as a um, as a very um, wonderful learning point for myself. Mm -hmm to look at that as from the viewpoint of learning that what happened really here? What happened? What did I think or what did I feel? You know, to take a, um, a stock of the self, what went on really here within? And then um, using the, um, the theory of knowledge or the experience um, of knowledge, experience of meditation, um, giving those thoughts to the self after that, um, that would complement or negate um, the thoughts I was having when I fell off track. You know? For example, I may um, have fallen off track um, when I um, compared myself with someone else, mm -hmm. you know, that um, so-and-so has a, you know, has a similar experience, but is um, at a higher position. I have similar experience. I am at a lower position. And then I went, uh, my thoughts went down that track and I feel, um, I feel so hurt. For example, the thoughts went that way. Um, and then I find myself, oh, I'm feeling hurt. Oh, what happened? You know? um, if there is a moment of awakening, otherwise the feeling hurt, uh, we stay in that space for a longer time, but it's, um, over practice, um, we are able to identify that very, very soon that, oh, I am in this space of hurt. Uh, what made me get into this space? First, take a stock of that, you know? 
like this um, acronym of SOS, apply that SOS to the self, stop, pause, observe, observe what, what's going on or what was the, uh, uh, what was the process, how did I end up here and then steer, steering my thoughts using the power of knowledge, using the steering wheel of knowledge. That everyone has their own part to play. Perhaps I may apply that point or um, I would say to myself that um, however much one puts in is what they receive. Perhaps I need to put in more. You know, I need to learn more skills perhaps. So, um, so this formula helps me to, to get back on track. So applying which point of knowledge and for that the, um, the daily um, listening to knowledge, um, contemplating on knowledge, that, that is very, very helpful when a situation comes in. So that was very useful because uh, I usually tend to beat myself up that I shouldn't be doing this. I have been, you know, practicing this for a year. So I shouldn't be having wasteful thoughts. Mm. But you're saying, sit back and observe the thoughts. And observe what happened, what happened really, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, because like today, somebody gave me an assignment which I really didn't want to do, but I took it on and spent the whole day thinking negatively about that person mm -hmm. um, while the doing the assignment actually took me just 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But the whole day was spent in being negative about the person and why did the person ask me to do that assignment? So what knowledge point could I have applied in that situation? That Wonderful lesson. Mm -hmm. What a great opportunity to see sure. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then to, yeah. to say the self, see the assignment or the actual task just takes a very small time. And that is, that is our experience you know, mm -hmm. of each one of us. And then uh, to say to the self, how much time uh, was spent wastefully just about you know, uh, pondering or brooding over those, over that assignment. So next time um, you just speak to yourself lovingly, gently that next time, um, I will save my time. I will save myself from spending so much time unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. I will just get on to the task, get on to the assignment, do it, finish, focus, do it with love, respect, whatever skills are required, done, move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I like, sorry. Go ahead. sorry. Guidance to the self, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I like your point of applying the knowledge point because I listen to Murli every day, uh, but I haven't started applying it in life. Um, so that is the role of Murli ultimately. It's, mm -hmm. it's about applicant dharna. Very and, much. Yeah, yeah. Very much. Om Shanti, thank you. Om Shanti, Om Shanti. thank you for Yeah, yeah. It's, in that sense, I find this a very fascinating study of yourself. It's not just saying go and sit in a corner and meditate. Mm. And with the classes we have, you delve into yourself deeper and deeper and new avenues open up. Uh, so it's wonderful knowledge. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kalpna. Thank you. Um, anyone else um, would like to share or... Um, share meaning what point really resonated or was helpful, or you might have a question or even an insight, something to add to what was shared today. Um, you can even put it in the chat if you wanted. Oh, hello, uh, Om Shanti. Hello, yes, Debra. this is Deborah. Um, mm. What I liked, um, you know, and maybe to add about accepting oneself, um, you know, as I am, not only in the physical part of how we're made up, but 
um, <clears throat> to accept our feelings. That's really important oh, to see our feelings, you know, if we're happy, if we're sad, if we're lonely, um, if we're angry, to, to be real with ourselves and, and accept, accept that mm -hmm. anger that, you know, someone yelled at us and we got mad and, and to sit with it and, and, you know, be okay. Okay. I'm angry because uh, whatever, but um, I think if we're not real with our feelings, uh, it's like hiding all our emotions and then it gets Absolutely. to be a, a big mess. Absolutely. So, yeah, but thank you for bringing that up. And just as like how Kalpana offered a, a scenario where she made a mistake and, you know, that's not a pleasant feeling, but what a wonderful lesson. Yes. You know, and so in the same way, I go, oh, wow, that really hurt me or that really disturbed me. And not to try to take it apart so much, but what I do is I sit with that experience I become really calm, I accept it. And then maybe I'll speak really nicely with myself and I'll say, you know, okay, sweetheart, where is this coming from? This is a new language for me. I started I mean, a couple years ago. I, All right, sweetheart, where is this coming from? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it kind of gets the defenses down and then I can gain some insights and find what is the what is the the truth behind it. What is the you know that I really feel behind every weakness or disturbance is a quality or a truth within that is wanting to um, emerge or be heard, and sometimes as um, you know, with anger, it comes from hurt or loss. Oh, well then where, where, where's the loss? What's, mm -hmm. what's the hurt about? Oh, I see. Yeah, that must be, you know, I'm just making it up, but like, right. you know, to kind of investigate in, in that way, not to go, why, what, how come that language? Cause exactly. that's unending. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Well, it's my turn. Hi, I'm here. This is Jim. Hi, Jim. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, everybody, for being here in this uh, evening. Um, it is so, uh, it's so real and beautiful that if we sense something inside of us, a love, a feeling, a compassion, something touched us, that is our self inside. And and as you both have said, to look at that feeling, to be with that feeling, you become more compassionate, more and more. You see somebody do a very kind act. Um, nowadays, it's easy to serve <laughs> if you're out and about. You just yeah. throw somebody a nice look, you know, and just say hello or good morning, you know. Um, and you just feel their reaction and you just kind of go into their reaction. And, and they really loved it. You may have touched them like nobody did and sometimes just just by a glance and another thing that touched me um in finding your true self is very simple it's to be aware that you're aware it's like i am watching my eyes look at you and i'm waving at you even hi you know it's i'm watching it i am aware that i'm here you know i'm aware that i'm eating sometimes for example and it's 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 almost like watching an animal nature, you know, I'm watching the fork move up to my mouth, you know, and I'm watching this horse eat almost, you know, <laughs> chewing it. Thank you very much. It was good. I mean, it really works. And, and in fact, if you put your hand out in front of you right now for a second and, and move your fingers around, you can say hi to yourself, you know. <laughs> so we are, uh, things are more real than we think. We're more awake than we uh, are taking advantage of you know just to look across the room and to see Deborah you know is wonderful to have a partner and um, uh, I'm just grateful and I'm grateful to be part of this I'm grateful that the folks have come on board here tonight and we're all discovering this together we're just what a wonderful time to serve no matter how hard it gets how dark it gets how 
really hopeless appearing it gets. It's like God is always there. Bob is always, always there, no matter what. You know, I've, I've been through something recently and I said, okay, Bob, if you want to be hard to get, go ahead. I'm still here for you, you know. <laughs> go ahead, be shy, Baba. You want, go ahead, come on. It's okay, I'm still here for you. You know, like that. <laughs> Om Shanti. Om Shanti, <laughs> Jim. Lisa, Olga, Nina. Anyway, you don't need to say anything, but I'm so glad you came. And it's late now. Why don't we close with a meditation? Yeah. Hi, everyone. That's from Lisa. Yes. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for wonderful conversation. Reminded me of many incidents and it's wonderful just to get back and remember who we are. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Nina. Nice to, mm -hmm. nice to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. yeah, would you like to say a few words of meditation? We'll sure. meditate together just to honor this time that we've shared together. Just a few moments of contemplation, stillness, appreciation, acceptance. coming back to the essence from the expansion. The essence of the true self. I tap into that natural peace natural joy that natural connection with everyone and the supreme divine that is within the space that is within the self filled with these qualities. I go into that space of myself. And I bring that part of the consciousness and fill that part in all the layers and layers I have acquired so far. All the memories, all the perceptions I hold, the unsettled emotions, that lie dormant in the layers of the consciousness that I am. I allow the free flow of the purest of pure energy that I am to fill the darkness of those layers. The strength, the true strength of the self makes everything appear to be a journey has brought me back to my true self. So I offer my respect, my reverence to all the experiences I have been through, to everyone that I have met, because everything is slowly helping me 
to come back to the quintessence that I am. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.